السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته سير تايم سوري فور ذيس تكنولوجي بيكوز نو بودي نو ماتر هاو يو ثينك ذات يو هاف ذا تكنولوجي اندر يور بيت تكنولوجي كان ديفيت يو ان شاء الله اي سي ات اجين وين ايفر يو جو تو يور جاردن سي بسم الله ما شاء الله لا حول ولا قوة الا بالله The Garden of Islamic Leaf, the plantation of Islamic Leaf, started nearly 40 years ago. And we were dreaming about having a garden, a part of the garden in Turkey. Because the vision was global and universal at the same time, at that time. It was not local. Never was local. Never the message of Prophet Muhammad was local or tribal or for the Arabs, or for the Kurashite, or for the people in the Arabian Peninsula. Never. It was mercy for the whole universe, including mankind and other creations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why your message as humanitarian and social workers should not be confined to Syria, or to Yemen, or to Ugor, or to Rohingya or to Palestinian should be confined to, your, to, to the universe. The universe that we know and the universe that we have to discover. I was in, earlier on in the other office talking about the statement mentioned by Pierre Curie, who was awarded the Nobel Prize in 1903 with his wife, Mary Curie. And they said what we have received from you, from Andalusia, 30 books. Let us to manage to divide the atom and go to the space. If we could have received all the libraries of the Muslims in Andalusia, or in Baghdad, or in Syria at that time, we could have been walking between planets and galaxies and ro by road or traveling by cars. Like, you have your mother in Mars. You call her, mommy, I'm going to visit you in Mars after five o'clock. So your uncle will be in Jupiter or Neptune. And you take another car to go to visit your uncle. The نستطعنا أن نمشي بين المجرات في الطرقات. Very important to know the land of your garden. Very important to know the depth and the width of your garden. Very important to know and understand that each inch at the backyard of your garden can bring a fruitful tree at any specialism, whether humanitarian, social, economic, political, call it, scientific, technological, call it. And the more you rise in your speciality, the more you rise in the knowledge at the back of your mind. You don't build a multi-story tower or a big mall, and let it to be run by a school kid. It's not the school kid knowledge, because he is pious, or he is the son of the sultan, or the son of the president. No. It's the best in the community, for the knowledge, experience, and vision, to be able to manage this multi-story. Multi-dimensional operation. كلما دخلت جنتها قلت ما شاء الله. In the field of humanitarian, we started traditional, responding, food, water, sanitation, health, orphan. But we need to move up. At this moment, after nearly 40 years, what we need to do, which would, which what would you do? Which what will, will you do? You know what? Thinking 
processing, researching, analyzing, crucifying, culturing, producing ideology. We cannot afford that they send us new ideology, new philosophy, new culture, and we will follow them like a flock of sheep. You are leader by the birth of your prophet. Because he was sent to lead humanity, not only to lead humanity, to save humanity, not only to save humanity, to guide, direct, and build humanity, discover the best of humanity for humanity, to please the glory of humanity. So you can't be led all the time, not anymore. Not at your age, not at your education, not at your diverse experience. This is what you cannot afford to have happening again. Among us, the many millions of refugees and internally displaced Syrians, highly talented, highly talented children, men and women, among us, the many hundreds of thousands and millions of Yemeni displaced, highly talented. Among us, the million in prison of Uyghur in China, highly talented. Among us, the Uyghur and the Rohingya and the Palestinian and any human being created to be talented. But you need to discover the talent of everyone. I keep repeating a proverb mentioned by the founder of Singapore in the 60s. He said, I consider every child is a talented child. And he invested in education. Education, education. That's why Singapore, in spite of a very small country, become one of the leading, one of, one of the most advanced economic economy on earth. Because of the vision of respecting the human resources. Utilizing the, utilizing the human sources and discover the, discovering the, 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 the talent of every individual in the country and investing in education. Each one of you has a talent or more than one talent. When we started 40 years ago, as maybe Abdurrahman might know me from a long time ago, I had no idea. I had no idea of humanitarian work, nothing. I had no idea of developmental work, nothing. I had no idea of something called advocacy, meal or deal or weed or feel, whatever you call it. But by experience, by learning, by interacting, by going from here to there to here to there, we learn. We travel to tens of countries. I never been a field worker, but I visited more than 84 countries. To learn from whom? From the people in the field, from people like yourself, the people of the knowledge, people like yourself, the people who have the pain and the agony and can see it 24 seven because you are all the time with the right holders. The right holders cannot be called beneficiary, never, you look at, look at your beard now. Never ever call them beneficiary anymore. Or I'll sort you out. Cannot call the people who pay our salaries beneficiaries. Cannot call them beneficiaries. Our forces are not beneficiaries. Widows are not beneficiaries. Refugees are not beneficiaries. Displaced, internally displaced people are not beneficiaries. Elderly and sick and sick are not beneficiaries. They are the right holders and they are the employers. Don't ever talk about that the chairman is the boss. Your boss is the child, the prisoner, the raped woman, the raped girl, and the elderly man. And this is why when Umar ibn Abd al-Aziz became a caliph, he locked himself inside a room and was for three days 
His wife, like you, she looked like you. What's wrong with that? It's not her in Turkish. The wife of the Khalifa looked like you. Have you seen him? I saw him. She looks like you. This was 1,000 years ago. I was there with them. You got it? Yes, yes, I. She was very happy that her husband became the Khalifa or the Sultan. But he came out from the room exactly talking about what you are doing nowadays. He was crying. And his wife said, why are you crying my husband? Say, why are you camera? Hey, what's wrong with you, my wife? I became responsible for the ummah, for the whole ummah, from China to Andalusia. Becomes a responsibility, becomes a burden, becomes a nightmare, comes sleeplessness. ففكرت في أمرها من he thought about الفقير الضائع the lost poor man or woman at lost المريض الفقير sorry الفقير الجائع the hungry poor and the lost sick man and woman because when they become sick they can do nothing and the broken-hearted orphan, and the burdened widow, and the elderly man and woman who are sick, these were the people whom you called them meal and feel and wheel. We talked about it 1,000 years ago. Don't come and teach me what they tell you as consultant today. Never to go back to Omar al Aziz, to go back to the social welfare of the children from the birth, go back to Umar ibn Khattab. To talk back at the dignity of women, go back to those people and learn from them to become leader like them. Don't take leadership from me. Never. But take leadership from the people who made the fingerprint and lay down the milestones not for their societies, but for humanity. Look at what Pierre Curie said about you, that we lost the track. We need to recreate another track. Young people like you have got the coming 50 years to finish the first 100 years of the mission which you started 40 years ago. And you can do it because I believe that you will do it. As I told you yesterday, one day you will be there, and one day become a minister or a prime minister. When you ask him and work hard, we will let it happen. Say inshallah with her. And all of us will be there. Because Allah is the justice, al haq and hate unjust and unjust to happen to anyone. He may be patient to what will you see, but he would like to see your reaction during this gloomy, misty, difficult time. What can you present as reflection of your Iman in action to help and save the community? This is what Allah wants to see from us. Don't be upset to the millions of people who are killed because they are shaheed. Change your anger into positive energy to build community. Change your action, action at your anger into a direction, into guidance, into saving, into building. Don't be distracted by the distracting power that they'll take, take you from the main stream to the side road. Never, never, never. And divide your team into people who will be responding to the humanitarian response in emergency, and people will be thinking, 
من كل فرقة من طائفة يتفقوا في الدين يتفقوا في الدين make a man a stew some people who can look back at research who can look back to find the solution and let the rest of the people to go forward I always keep saying this example many times till people become sick of me like Khalid al Murid when he changed the victory into defeat to the Muslims or the defeat of the Kafir into victory and this was this Firqa who looked at the gap inside the Muslim army at the time and said no, the war is not over this Firqa is very important you specialize in research you specialize in advocacy you specialize in community building you specialize in actually security but the rest will go out huh? to help the people who are in need. While they are there, there's somebody taking for them. Somebody supplying with them, somebody helping them. Don't go, all of you, do one thing. In the good old days, we were doing everything. But nowadays, we cannot afford it. But if you are a leader, you have to know the strength and the power of your soldiers and fight them according to the talent, the experience, the capability, the ability. And this is you. I'm talking to you not as employees. I'm talking to you not as somebody who comes for a job. I'm talking to you as the leader in the make. Leaders in the make, men and women, young and old, black and white, short and tall, different culture, different nationalities. And one objective, we have been given this task, not only to save them, but to save us. Everything we'll do for others will come back for ourselves. Those who work for others, they live forever. If you work for others, you will live forever. Can't die. Allah will not let him die, metaphorically, because his message will be live and kicking. Legacy. You call it legacy, we we'll call it message. The message that being coming from the agony and the bleeding of nations and people will never fail even if someone covers it up with dust or with mud or with ash to come back again and again and again and again to people when they discover it they said oh my great grandparents have done this hundred years ago I have to go and establish justice justice is what we need justice for everyone and for anyone, not only for our people. Our people are a part of our mission. If we save everybody, we save our people. But our people as every human being, not every human being, every creation of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why Allah, for you, before you were born, our father Adam alayhi salam, when did Noah came here? <laughs> Noah came here, said the Noah, the boat. Came to Turkey, huh? yes, yes. Somebody say came to Turkey, somebody say came to Iraq, <laughs> somebody say came to India. When Turkey? Noah. They say it's on Judea. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Noah came to Turkey, huh? <laughs> he, already, he already came, inshallah. He already landed here. Inshallah. Help me, I know. No, I can't come back again. He has been building his ark for years. And people were laughing at him, looking at somebody in the middle of the desert, building a ship. What is this? Mad, mad. Huh? Actually, before Adam came onto the land, Allah, millions of years before the creation of Adam, has prepared not only the land, 
but only the land. The land is the smallest, the smallest planet. He built, he, Allah has created all the universe. I give you the example, so keep learning it. Of one word called Jannatun Abdu as Samawati wa Dar. We know that the Jannah, like the width of the skies and the earth. We know the earth, we can measure it. The, the diameter, whatever, the circumference. But do we know the calculation of how many skies that we have? Do we know the width and length of the skies Allah has created for you? Before you were created? For you! You can imagine. Millions of years before Adam landing on earth, Allah has created all of this universe for his Khalifa. You are the Khalifa. Don't let them to reduce your quality, your image, your value into a village, into a township, into a city into a nationalism, into a tribalism. As-samawatu al-ard khuliqat lakum. The heavens and the skies, and the earth and the skies created for you millions of years before you were created. You share in heaven when you go there, you can't imagine it. You will never be able to imagine it. Size, glory, and whatever fruits, and whatever furniture, and people with you, angels, children, wives, brothers, and sisters will be there for you. Same for you, sisters. So this kind of creation of the whole universe for you. Nowadays, we are reducing our value into a nationalism, tribalism, sectarianism. Ah, I feel sick. We come out from the whole universe, which created for you, to one or two meters bedroom, which is not there for you, because the creation, and you are actually the custodian that Allah appointed us to serve help, guide all the creation of Allah on earth. Planet, mountains, world. Somebody come and talk to you about climate change. It's a shame. It's a shame. Somebody can come and talk to you about animal justice or caring for animals. It's a shame. Somebody talk about children, right? It's a shame. It's you. We should bring this wealth from the knowledge of our history and our civilizations and our religion to tell them some good, some good thing. We are protecting women, women right, women right, and what? And Allah has established it through the teaching of Muhammad. Isn't it shame for us to keep led by people? for trying to poison our mind with different philosophy of things. Philosophy, ideology, culture, history, language, values and moralities is what you need to do now. To lead. Programs, anybody can do programs. Anyone can do that. Anyone but not anyone can do, can actually establish new philosophy, culture, or values. To conclude, Arabic language is a supreme, untouchable. No other language can rise high to reach the height of the level, of the diverse, and diversity of the Arabic language. That's why Allah chosen Quran his last message to be in Arabic. Master it, whether you are Pakistani or Indian or Arabs. Even Arabs now are, there, are forgetting the Arabic language. 
unfortunate, as Turkish. Even Syrian are forgetting you. Even Egyptian are forgetting you. I'm very proud to stand next to the, to, to, to the dwarf and forget about our giants. Our giants in the history and the colloquial meaning and the proverbs and the metaphor of the language that Allah has chosen it to be the language of his everlasting book of Quran al -Karim. Never ever as a Pakistani to champion the humanity was Urdu only. Speak Urdu, but speak Arabic. Speak Turkish, but speak Arabic. Speak English, but speak Arabic. Never. You know, it diversify your thinking ability. It build the dimension of thinking at the back of your mind. When you know the different meanings of the same word, the different meaning, multitude of meaning of the same word. And we are ignoring it. Because we have been told, or taught to ignore it. Unfortunately. I mentioned six or seven points. This is your 50 years to come. If you work for others, you live forever. Yes, sir? Now I stopped because I was told to keep quiet and shut up by the boss in this room. And if you don't shut me up, I shut you down. Because up and down, seven up and seven down. Up the four, up the five. I love I gave like a, uh, I was I was in another meeting talking about uh, the song called Mahibba Kahmar. <laughs> and we call the new philosophy donkeyism. When al humuria al humuria alwa wal istihmar. Did you speak English? I'm speaking English now. Yalla, yalla. You are the uh, wife of the Sultan. Yes, say inshallah. <laughs> Tell her. Inshallah. 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 Tafadalu. Wa illa hakkallim tani. Either you speak or I speak. Yal, bismillah. Bismillah. Yes, stand up. Uh, ah, raise your voice. Uh, what's the secret that makes you keep until now? You want me to die? No, no, I, I don't know. I didn't mean like that, but you were going to say it. I'll die. Oh, I tell you what. For me, on personal level, when I come and be with you, I take some of your energy. When I go to the field, I take a lot of energy. Okay? This is for a personal level. So if you want to revitalize yourself, mix with the people that Allah put a lot of energy in their hearts and their mind and their soul. And they're very patient on their suffering. So take energy from them and change their hardship into ease on personal level. For Islamic League or any organization to focus on the mission. The mission is serve, help, build. Serve, when you, when you serve, you become a servant. Say, I am a servant now. Say it. I'm a servant now. Say it loudly. I'm a servant now. I can't hear you. I'm a servant now. All of you are servants. Whether you like it or not. If the community accepts you as a servant. Because sometimes the community does not accept you as a servant. How the community can accept you as a servant? If you are sincere. And show humility. Huh? And being humble. And focus. 
on the delivery and transparent to them. This is the servant. What do you say? Serve, help, and what? I said three things. Built. Huh? Built. You have to serve people that you can help. And I can give another example from the history. Zul Qarnayn, you know who is Zul Qarnayn? Yes. He's not a Pakistani, yeah? He's always Egyptian, like this. <laughs> Born in Cairo. When he went to, he, well, first of all, he went to the West. The Ain al Hamad, you know? When the sun was rising from the West. Then he went to the people of the East. Then he went to the people who cannot speak, no spoken language. Okay? And they start to complain about Google and Magoo. And tell them, we'll give you some money. Said, no, 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 what Allah gave me is more, this empowerment. You know what he did? First of all, he said, You people, as local localization, localism, go and get these big blocks of iron. They started to teach them how to bring the iron, then to cut the iron, then to build the wall with him. Before that, he put the army to protect the community from Gug and Magu. Because those, this big wall was not just built, uh, built in, one, in one day. He has to bring his army to protect them. So they were with him to bring the wood, to bring the iron, even to make the alloy. To mix, you can imagine, see, come here next to me, please. Because as Yemeni, I am Yemeni as well. Of you. No, of you, not of me. Okay? So what he has done, he protected the community, which you do, you know, in, in your philosophy, protection of the refugees. <laughs> the Karnin did it three, four thousand years ago. Okay? Empowerment. He did it. You go and do A, B, C, D. What I want you to imagine, how did he build? He must have been putting these big blocks of iron and wood and burning and uh, making a fire to melt, to melt at the iron. You can imagine between two mountains. Then, uh, uh, from, uh, Qitran. Talking about the Qitran. Qitran could be Kapar uh, and Nahas. Qitran, that means that he melted it somewhere. You can imagine, I'm just asking you to imagine that the, the, the technology transfer. Iron, fire, melting more than 1,000 degrees. Then, Kapar. Then putting both of them on one another, then making the wall. Mastaw and Nisadu and Nizaru and Nizaru and Mastaw Lakma. Mastaw and Nizaru is very smooth. How did he manage to make the surface smooth? You tell me as a Yemeni. Samud and Da'al from where? Allah. Allah. I'm asking you about the technology. Imagine, imagine how, how, did, how did he manage to make it smooth? You know this, 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 this table is not smooth enough. The wall that he made was huge. It became smooth. Nobody can climb it. And when he's trying to make a hole to it, he can't. Almost grown up. This kind of technology was 3,000 years ago. By somebody who came to your community, telling them, I protect you, I empower you, I transfer the technology to you, but I don't need anything from you. This is the Islamic dimension of global intervention. The Islamic dimension of global intervention, when you empower, protect, huh? and save your community, and make a knowledge transfer. This is what Pierre Curie was asking in 1903. But please, 
Muslims, why didn't you give us the thousands of books of science and technology that you wrote to make a journey between the galaxies and the planets? And I'm all like, imagine, I'm telling you, imagine the process of building this world. Each one of you, when you go at home, my God, I did become this is the power of you as a humanitarian community and social work. Go back to the depth of your history to learn the knowledge of civilization that you build for the future. Did I answer your question? Thank you. Thank you. Huh? Yes. Yes, sisters. Yes, brothers. Yes. During your journey. Rise. Yes. Please. During your journey, historically, like 40 years till now, mashallah. Of course, there were some moments that you, you felt that you are failing. I feel it? You are feeling that Peter. you are failing. Or Peter Popish. Yes, yes, of course. Yeah. So, what motivates you to continue? What are the techniques? Well, some of the most difficult moments of us feeling down were the issue of Bosnia. The raping of young girls and old women. And the inability of us to send help to Sarajevo was under siege for three years. Nothing was going inside and we could not be able to sleep, but we managed to keep working, working, working. Okay? The lifeline of Sarajevo was a tunnel under the airport. Everything was coming through the tunnel within one, one, one mile. And the height of the tunnel was 1.2 meters. I went through the tunnel and they injured my head because I couldn't be able to carry on working like this. And my head was bleeding, alhamdulillah. Like many others, many Bosnians were killed when they were coming out of Sarajevo to buy a tray of eggs, to buy a liter of oil. You know how much what the liter of oil was? It was 60 mark or 70 mark. Or this tray of eggs, maybe 20 or 24 or what about, 50 or 40 or 60 marks. This was a time when our despair did not stop us. Because we were not focusing on the despair. We were focusing on how can we go through the tunnel and reach the people outside or inside. This was one example. The second example was our work in South Sudan. We decided to go to work in South Sudan in 2003. Our office in North Sudan was since 1989-1990. And when we went there, the, 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 the local government said, you are late, but most work. It's mostly Christian. And we wanted to apply for a project to build a cohesive community between Muslims and non-Muslims in the South, it's our vision. And we managed to bring a dozen or more of local South Sudanese organizations in 2005 or 2006. Okay? But the donor agency did not give us this project. You know what they told us? We'll give you another project in East of Sudan because they are Muslims like you. I was in tears, but only myself. Because our mission at that time, and our vision, Naki Abdel Nabi, myself and the others, was to build a very cohesive, multi-faith community in the South. So the five or six million euro or dollar given to us in the East, which is Damazin, Kisan, and Cormac, was not attractive to me. That's why this is another moment of despair. 
which find that your find that the decision is not in your hand to implement the vision that you have. Okay. My worry now for Afghanistan. My worry now still existing for the whole of Balkan. The whole of Balkan, which is uh, Kosovo, Serbia, Macedonia, Bosnia, and the others. Worry, big worry. My worry now for the minority, minority which nobody talks about them anymore. Or politically, as I mentioned, Uyghur, Inga, Kashmir, Eritrea, as well as others. This is my worry. And might not let you to be able to sleep because you cannot be with them. The only thing you can do, make a dua. Dua is good, but not good enough. This is the limitation. This is the limitation. And this is the limitation. But actually another limitation is fighting corruption. Cross board, it's there everywhere. There, even in Europe and America, it is there, but different levels. From certain countries, you know, in the 2013 14, one who invited the Prime Minister of uh, Yemen, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sindua, what's his name? Yes, Sindua. Sindua. I said, I was, he was speaking and I was speaking. I said, the level of corruption in Yemen is about 40 50%. You know what he said? No, it was more than 90%. More than 90%. More than 90%. More than 90%. 95. I saw you 19 at uh, 2030 or 2040. See how, as with any very honest man, and they explain not the 50% of mine, but the 95% of him. Because he's inside the Yemeni kitchen, doing salta, asida, chafut, tahsa, mandi. So fighting corruption is incredible. Reforming United Nations is something which is a nightmare. 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 Because it comes absolutely clear that a handful of countries are stopping justice for humanity. It's another challenge that you cannot have to give. I'm not saying you cannot. You have to try to do something. But don't lose hope. Don't lose hope. Don't lose hope. Yes, sisters. Yes, brothers. Yes, brothers. Yes, brothers. Actually, my question. I have two questions. Yeah. Yeah. BBC, yes. Hena, or CNN, and the first. And Khalid, and CNN. Yeah. The first question that Brother Murad said: uh, What times that you have felt that you are down or you are frustrated? I can't ask the other questions. Can you tell us about the, the moment that you was uh, happy and uh, feeling uh, exhausted, excited and uh, because of some achievement that you have done? This is one question to uh, the opposite question that he answered. The second question is about, you know, now we, alhamdulillah, we are very proud that we work under Islamic Relief name. We think now Islamophobia, Islamophobia that they have been attacked by the others. How Islamic? word or name being sustained up to this and strong mashallah from, from day to day is became more strong especially in islamic uh, worldwide so, some moment of success come back from no afghani here no. Anyway, from afghanistan 2001 okay our message was delivered from Kabul to the BBC twice. The only one who came to the House of Commons, the House of Lords, to report on the humanitarian situation in Afghanistan from the whole of Europe, of, 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 not of Europe, let me talk about UK, UK was Sakandar Ali. Young man, at your age or younger, he came in full confidence from Kabul to make a report to the upper and the lower house. At the time of September 11th, that was November 2001. And we were in tears 
in the balcony, listening to his introduction, because the authority and the decision maker in the UK was listening to Islamic League representative. It does not have to create money, but has to create an impact. So, joy and achievement is not money. It's not a football match. It's an impression of impact, of change. And this is what happened at the middle of the storm of September the 11th. Okay? What was the other question? Uh, about Islamophobia. Islamic in Islamophobia, we decided to be stubborn from 1985. As I mentioned this morning to the other people, you know who was the one who designed the logo of Islamic Relief? What is it? Yeah. This logo. Huh? No, no, no. no. <laughs> Can you keep quiet or what, which floor this one? Or what, which floor? Four. Can you fly? <laughs> fly down. Which one who designed this logo for us in 1985? Turkish. Turkish, why? Did you hear it from me before? Not at all. Huh? Not at all. <laughs> but the good thing about it is we don't know him. We don't know him. And they never take the money from us. It was like donation. That's why this logo is still flying high in different parts of the world. And the blessing for him and his family is coming back. And there was a big discussion at the time. Shall we take Islamic out of Islamic relief or keep Islamic? Said no way to take Islamic out of Islamic relief. We have to teach others to be able to deal with a professional Islamic organization. This was a challenge, and we managed to do that. 2001, we took 25% of the funding of DEFI to Afghanistan, and the 75% were given to nine other organizations. It was one million pounds at the time. And we made the camps in Shaman and Hat and all this Hazara area in Baluchistan. See? Because we stood up with an identity. We stood up having a character and value. <coughs> yes, we are very proud of what we are. So what? You know when you say so what? So what? Yes, I am a Muslim, I am a Christian. So what? So what do you want? What's next? Why well, keep asking about my faith? What's next? Ask about my action. Ask about our contribution. Ask about our character. Why you keep all the time talking about Islam, Islam? What's that to do with you? That's why we managed during the, since the mid-90s, of last century to have this argument inside the Islamic League and stay as we are. But you have to rise as high as the value of your name. The value of your name is very valuable. So don't let the representative of your organization to demean or demolish the value of your name of the organization. Because the name gives the image of the identity of the organization. Yes, brothers and sisters. I'm not tired, by the way. I'm very happy. I can talk to you tomorrow. We are happy to listen to you. Okay, Harash, you're not going to go home tonight. <laughs> yes, brother. But I asked a question about the settlements, but actually my, my main question was, what motivated you to continue this journey, although you had all these settlements? Sometimes some, some people are like, Okay, I failed. I won't continue. I will just give up and go home. What, what made you continue this journey? What, maybe, what motivated you? What, what techniques you use in order to continue? Technique, okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> what, what actually technology you use? <laughs> I think the best educator is the people in the field. Whenever we used to, feel, to, to, to fall down, 
We used to go to the field to be with them. We remember that food. And we send our young people to the camps, Kremlin 1 and Kremlin 2 in the food. With Jangir and, my, and others. And Paluma, remember Paluma? Being there, building the camps, is this kind of energy, which if they have no money, no resources, they decide to stay. Okay, because they feel that they have a mission towards the people of Darfur, or towards the people of South Sudan, or towards the people of Kenya, or towards the people of Somalia, or towards the people of Ukraine. Try to separate the politics and the religion from the suffering of the millions of Ukrainians, whether they are internally displaced or became refugees in different countries. A refugee is a refugee, humiliated individual, humiliated person, humiliated certainly. When they become internally displaced, they become humiliated because there is no shelter, there is no house, there is no education, there is no security. Even the Syrian inside Syria and in the neighboring countries, they can't feel the same. They can't be the same. But actually, you focus not on how bad you feel. You focus on how can you try to change this kind of status to them. Okay? And knowing your limitation, but being with them, so this is, if you keep being with the people whom you claim that you are serving, they'll give you the energy. They'll give you the vision. They'll give you the ideas. And they'll give you the solution. I, Safar, to say what is the, uh, is it, how to be done? In 2010, in 2010, I was lecturing in uh, MSF, West Sub Frontier London. And what I have done, I mentioned a new formula. A new formula. A new formula called that. Bad case. You go to the French or to the British, hire people and tell them fat case. Nowadays, you talk about safeguarding, but talk about fat case. What do I mean by fat? Fat here is the role of I N G O. This is your role. Funding advocating and training. Fat. Sister Fatima, yes. you give me the fat. I give you what? Second word. <laughs> okay. No, thank you. No, no. I'm not going to give it to you. Funding, advocating, and training. Because you have the means in Europe, in America, and other Canada, and other places. What do you mean by case? It is the responsibility of the local community. Local. We talk about a journey of years, knowledge based, innovative, sustainable solution. If you give me the fat, I give you the kiss. Nothing to do with safeguarding. I like it. You know, because the only one who can make the knowledge based sustainable solution are the people who are suffering from the agony of displacement of the became refugees. Don't come and tell me that you are in Istanbul will be able to find a sustainable solution for the people of Egypt unless you go 
and sit down with the people and listen to them. So, so but this is what's happening. It was 2016 Global Summit, which was in, in Istanbul. Localization was the cornerstone. It's not there anymore. Have to empower the local community to stand up and to be equal partner to you. This is what we invented 12 years ago. And this is what you need to keep inventing to build this kind of equal partnership between those people to make local leadership from them and those people who still them don't come to me with your culture, philosophy. We have our culture. I'm protected. We have, we have. What you need to do, tell me and advocate for me. And I will do the rest. This kind of partnership. Yes. Yes, brother. Yes, sisters. Regarding Islamophobia before Bam Prof. Uh, in this two after 2002, oh sorry, or four, we developed something else about Islamophobia. Called R. A R M. Arm Muslim Charities. What do I mean by Arm Muslim? Very controversial. R, the A means allow them to work. The R means, means regulate. You know, Sister Meal? What does Meal mean? Sister Meal. Regulate. And the M means monitor. Don't ever talk about us as terrorist organization. Allow us, monitor us, or very, very open to being one, and regret us. But don't stop us from working. I will conclude with an incident happened because it has been I have passed the time. I will conclude with another incident happened in Geneva, I think, in two thousand and five or 2006, when I was attending high-level meeting with the IASC, I, International Islamic Committee, yes, IASC, and I was wearing my fashionable Shirwani and Shirwani, and my big brother from Pakistan will tell you what Shirwani means. My beard was long, and sometimes Allah gave me the insight of what is the discussion is about. And they were sitting in this room, Shirwani, huh? You know the Pakistani traditional yeah, yes. overcoat, like the Sultan dress. Look like Pakistani or Afghani, but Afghani no, is different. They have got different coat of dress. I took the microphone. In an angry mood. When I'm angry, my voice will be stronger than the voice of today. You know what I said? Never ever associate Islam with terrorism. Never ever. They never talk about that. What you feel in the discussion is it is covered. Islam is and was a religion. Came to save humanity. That's one side of it. It produces civilizations which lasted for 1,000 years and more to guide and save humanity. And you enjoy the fruits of this revolution. Where, where, where this was said? In Geneva, in the palace of the United Nations. In a very focused message with my Shirwani and beard at that time. Then I finished the statement. My aim at that time 
This was 2004. This was, no, I think after 2004. Not, I'm not sure it's 2004 or 5, something like this. Our aim at the time is to have an MOU with WFP. When I came back to the room, you know what happened, sister? What's your name? Tahani. Tahani. Tahani, my brother. Tahani, and Tahani, Allah. I am in the Zika God. When I came back, you know who came to me to give me his card? The director of WFP. Tell me, sir, whenever you are wrong, come and visit me. Your wish was to go and see him and take his car. But your statement that she made in this high level meeting made him to come forward to you. So Allah said so. I said, of course. When I come to Rome, I will visit you. <laughs> I went back home with my, with my office manager, with somebody called the, uh, Khalid Mualid. It was very... <laughs> and we bought a new camera. Because I want to go and see him for that photo. And I traveled, we invented something that I'm going to be, I say, I'm, by the way, I'm going to be there in, 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 in Rome in two weeks' time. I can manage that for me too. We have nothing there, I'm not going to meet him. And uh, Khaled bought the camera for me. It was this comedy one. Abdulhab Chikarello in Rome, me in Rome, and Khaled in Birmingham. How can we operate the camera? Abdullah does not know how to operate the camera. I don't know how to operate the camera. And Khaled does not know how to operate the camera. And it was a fight. It was nearly 20 minutes before the meeting. <laughs> then we took the camera with us, and we went to see the man. And when I went to see the man, Abdullah wanted to take the photo. He said, no, no, Abdullah, not now. It's me and Dr. Banna only. Is the official photo for that day. I said, oh, of course. <laughs> <laughs> they have to be an imam or, or whatever you call it, a comedian. So I said, come this way, Abdullah. And he got the official photographer. You know why is this? Because al izza al wada'aha Allah fi qalbi nahiyatik. The honor and the pride that Allah has put in his heart towards you. Because you say what you say, without feeling of the risk for the contract to be signed. And when we sat down together, I told him, my statement was very harsh. He said, no, never was harsh. That's what he said. I said, why? He said, because you gave us a wake-up call. To tell us the civilization did not start did not start 300 years ago, 200 years ago. Civilization started 1,000 years ago by you people. Please come to our global strategic meeting in Dublin. <coughs> and please speak from your heart the way you spoke in Geneva. I said, of course. He said, can you do it? Of course, I'm doing it. My business didn't speak me. I went back home, I took with me two people, Khaled Mualid and another brother who was head of the advocacy, Adil. And both of them coming to me to attend the global strategic meeting of WFP wearing top notch clothes tie, suit, gel, <laughs> and they came out from my house with very, very old Egyptian trouser made of cotton. I think it was 40 or 50 Egyptian pounds at the time. And an Egyptian jacket, which was 100 pounds, and scruffy shirt. They were laughing at me. What is this? I was laughing at them. And when we landed there in Dublin to go to the meeting, they found that no one in the whole room wearing a tie, or a suit, or a jacket. 
They were a little bit embarrassed with this theory. Took everything out and put it in their actual uh, bags. And they gave me 45 minutes to speak. But from there, we started to sign the MOU with WFP, which maintained our program in Chechnya, especially, and other places up till now. From what you said in Geneva, I think 2003 or 2004, at that time. Don't be scared of saying the truth in a polite way, because the one who decides for the risk is not you, it's Allah whether this is coming from this side or from this side. Hands up for me.